this is an engagement of like-minded people in similar circumstances. <laughs> we have a lot to share and to learn from each other. Excellencies, President William Ruto settled on me as his deputy because he was persuaded that I was an am equal to the task. Similarly, I assume that your bosses, the governors, picked you to deputize them because they were convinced you are equal to the task. Most importantly, we had with the president and still do and enjoy a chemistry of friendship. We also shared in our aspirations of restoring the dignity of our people, rebuilding our nation and taking the country to the next level of development. Upon election, we had a conversation and agreed on how to jointly deliver on our promise to the people. We are joined at the hip. The success of William Ruto as president is the success of Ricardo Gashago as deputy. The failure of President William Ruto as president is the failure of Deputy President Ricardo Gashago. Similarly, the success of your governor is your success. The failure of your governor is your failure. It therefore behoves you and your governor to work together collectively to succeed because both of you have a five-year social contract with the residents of your county. That contract will be renewed on successful delivery or terminated on failure to deliver. So you are in the same boat and suffer a similar fate either way. Through executive order number one of 2023, President William Ruto spelled out my roles as deputy president. A clear definition of the roles and responsibilities of the president and the deputy has helped us work in a complementary and not in competition. Indeed, each one of us is very busy. We have no time to idle around or entertain destructive and destructive business. Our bosses, the Kenyan people, are looking upon us for results to uplift their standards of living. Ahead of the August 9, 9 2022 general election, hardly any deputy governor was working well with their governors. While part of this agreement was due to competition of ideas and political ambition, the first and the main casualty was service delivery. The victim were the people. And I want to say the situation at the national level then, where the then president was outrightly and openly undermining his deputy and encouraging junior officials to undermine him, contributed to the same behavior by the governors. Or rather, the governors had learned bad manners from the president. <laughs> now that the situation is different, we have a president who works well with his deputy, respects him, gives him work. We expect our governors also to learn those good manners from the president and allow their deputies space to work. I want to say, in all my life, my public life, I've been an assistant. I was personal assistant to the head of public service, Professor Philip Mbithi, in the early 90s. Later on, in the early 2000, I was a personal assistant to President Uru Kenyatta. And today, I am principal assistant to President William Ruto. The duty of a principal assistant is very is clear spelled out. One, is total loyalty to the boss. Secondly, is to keep up with his pace. If he is hard working, you work as hard. If he is lazy, you slow down so that you are able to work together. <laughs> For me, 
my boss is on the first lane in terms of hard work. So I struggle to keep up with this pace. But he has allowed me latitude to work. And he has allowed me to be creative and innovative. He has given me a budget. He has given me all the necessary support. I have no excuse to fail him and the people of Kenya. I have to work very hard because the president has been very kind to my office. Of course, having come from a very difficult situation, and he will never allow what happened to him to happen to me or anybody else later. I am requesting our governors to allow their deputies to work and give them the opportunity to work. And a governor and a deputy must work together because they came together by choice. When you picked your deputy, you knew his strength. You cannot thereafter turn around and say, no, he should slow down. I want to urge our governors to allow their deputies to assist them. The truth of the matter, a hard-working deputy is a good thing for any boss. And unless you have inferiority complex and you feel inadequate, why should you not allow your deputy to work? The situation that President William Ruto, then as deputy president, found himself in is that he was on the first lane and others were feeling inadequate and were having an inferiority complex. And I can tell you, a conflict between a president and his deputy, a conflict between a governor and his deputy, is very bad for the residents. The kind of trouble we have as a country in terms of matters economy, largely, was because of that conflict. I want to urge our governors to create a working chemistry with their deputies because they went to the election as a pair. But you also have a job to do. You have to, the way the CS education has said, the boss is a boss and the boss is always right. It is you to create a working chemistry with the boss. The responsibility is much more on you than the boss. You have to know your boss. If he's an early riser, there's no way you can agree if you wake up late. If the boss gets to the office before you, then already there's a problem. If the boss works throughout and you are saying you are on holiday, you are going to have a problem. So you must study the boss, understand him, and align. And the responsibility is yours as a deputy. The other thing, my good friends, my fellow deputies, me, I found a way to survive. I want to guide you. <laughs> Please, never discuss your boss with a third party. Please. Not even your wife or your husband. Again, if there is a problem, don't grab out there for your boss to hear you are grabbling. If there is an issue, look for him, sit down respectively and raise the issues and the two of you can sort it out. Many times people come to see me to try to encourage me to have a discussion about my boss. I never let them go beyond the first sentence. Discussing your boss is out of question. Grabbling about your boss out there for him to hear you are grabbling is out of question. Look for him or her for that matter. And if there are issues, you'll be able to, to, to sort them out. And I'm sure the same way you are moving together when you are campaigning, you are able to create some chemistry. And it's good for the people. Again, for those governors who are on first term, as a deputy, now you have so, so to be careful. Because if you start depicting tendencies, like you may think or you are planning to unseat him in the next election, you are likely to have problems, definitely. So you just have to be contented in being a deputy for the two terms. Then thereafter, if you have your own ideas, but if you start creating your own space within the first term, the governor is likely to feel uncomfortable 
admittedly the soul because he's a human being. So let's agree that as deputies, we have to be humble to our bosses, we have to respect them, we have to consult them, and we, it's our job to create a good working relationship. I ask governors across the country to make good use of their deputies. I am a living example. The president has given me nine functions. I can hardly cope. And the tenth function takes most of my time, 70%. The tenth function is any other duty assigned by the president. That takes 70% of my time. I am an extremely busy person. Yesterday, we had a conversation with him after cabinet, and he was asking me, this work is so much. I'm working so hard, I cannot clear. You are working so hard, both of us cannot clear. Those fellows who had denied me work, what were they up to? So this work is too much. There is enough for everybody, even counties, governors. Let us make use of our deputies. Let us give them specific functions. I urge the governors to do what the President William Ruto has done in my case. He did an executive order and spelled out my duties. First and foremost, I'm the principal assistant to the president. Number two, I chair cabinet committees. Number three, I oversight and coordinate implementation of cabinet decisions. Number four, I'm in charge of intergovernmental relations. Number five, I chair IBEC. Number six, I coordinate development partners. Number seven, I coordinate uh, constitutional commissions and independent offices. Number eight, I'm in charge of the Nairobi River Commission. Along the way, he has added me coffee reforms, tea, and milk. And of course, any other functions assigned by the president. I am an extremely busy person. I can hardly cope. And he has given me a budget and every necessary support that I need. And all that is to his benefit because he is the president. He is the one who has emerged from the people of Kenya. So when I make his work easier, he is the winner. And that is what a, a, a clever person does. So when you deny your deputy a chance to make your work easier, you must be foolish. Because this work is yours. At the end of it all, he takes the credit. So if you get a hard-working deputy, you have every motivation to enable that deputy and empower him or her and facilitate. Because at the end of it all, the ultimate mandate is with you as a governor. The deputy is there with you, but the ultimate mandate is with you. So I want to urge our governors to borrow a leaf from President William Ruto and allow the deputies to work. Be respectful to your bosses. Consult. Don't undermine them. Keep up with their pace. And most important, finally, is that you must be the defender of your boss. That is your first duty. Because if the boss is in trouble, automatically you are also in trouble. So from a very selfish perspective, you must defend the boss. So these as me or fellows sometimes don't understand me. They think I'm too combative and abrasive. No, I'm just doing my job. <laughs> I have to defend my boss. Wakipanga maramano niko hapo. Wakileta kelele niko hapo na wajibu. Because if you don't do that, if your boss is in trouble, you are equally in trouble. The two of you are like Siamese twins. And because he cannot defend himself, you must cover his back all the time. You let the boss to be in front, to pursue the development agenda, to fulfill his manifesto, and you stay behind him and watch his back from all sides. Any ammunition towards him, you stop it. You must agree to take the bullet on behalf of the boss. You must be in a position to step. If somebody is shooting at him, you must come in between the boss and the bullet and take the bullet on his behalf. 
I don't know how many of you are willing to take the bullet for your boss. Mine, I do. That is why even these Asimio characters are threatening to report me at the Hague. I don't know how defending your boss can be a crime against humanity. <laughs> I think these Asimio characters have lost their head. Yeah? I think they have been in the streets for many years. They don't even think well. How can defending your boss and his programs become a crime against humanity to be reported at the Hague? I think if they send a letter there, it will be returned to the centre. Because they don't seem to understand how the ICC works. But of course, it also says a lot of the frustration that they have. That now any problem they have with anybody, the solution is the ICC. So, please, defend your bosses. Even if you are not agreeing very well, publicly defend them, then you can fight internally. Mukiwa na shida na mkuba, musilete huko inje. Tafuta he muonge in between five walls. Four walls and the roof. Don't take those things out there. They are not good for the county. They are not good for the country. Like any other marriage, there will be difficulties. There will be difficulties like marriage. And of course, you know marriage is like a plane taking off. The taking off is very rocky. But when it takes off, it stabilizes. Again, the problem comes during landing. So initially, the first one year, there will be a few disagreements here and there on style, on language, on behavior. But somehow, you should be able to work out a good formula. Uh, just like the president, the governor is a symbol of unity in the county. The deputy governors have a critical role of advising their governors in unifying the various arms of governance at the counties, including the county assemblies. I therefore request you to focus on building your counties for the good of the people who give you the mandate and keep the eye on the ball. Excellencies, while misunderstandings are about to happen in the political leadership, they should never be allowed to degenerate to fallouts. The situation we are seeing in Nyanza in one of the counties is not anything that one wants to talk about. It's unnecessary, it's unhealthy, and it can be resolved in one way or another. This defeats the essence of grassroots leadership and indeed devolution a critical component of the bottom-up economic transformation agenda. Counties are a key ingredient to the Kenya Kwanzaa plan, and we want to see the devolution working. As you are aware, my office is charged with overseeing devolution. I have the State Department dependent of devolution at Terry Baika. It is open to you, and you should feel free to walk in and engage me, irrespective of your political affiliation. We are serving the same people and the same nation. It is our responsibility to resolve any conflicts before they escalate into a crisis. That is why you saw me spend time in Meru when there was a problem between the governor and MCS, and I solved it. The county is quiet because devolution must succeed. Again, that was any other function assigned by the president. Again, I had to move to Kericho, where the MCS were making work impossible. Again, I was able to sort it out. So I was told by somebody the fire extinguishers are used in Kericho and uh, Meru. I should keep them near just in case there is another problem somewhere else. I can be able to come in. President William Ruto remains committed to the success of devolution. And that is why we have made a decision to align the National Government Administration and all other National Government officials that governors, the deputy governors, and the county governments are not their enemies. The previous administration had created a scenario where national government officials treated the county government as enemies. We have led by example. The national government and the county governments are one. We serve the same people. And we have so directed all officers of the national government administration. And I'm sure you can confirm that today we have the best relationship between the county governments and the national government, and it will remain so during the term of President William Ruto and I, because it's good for the country. Finally, the Governor Mombasa, the Governor Nandi, they have raised the issues of disbursements. It's true. We have had challenges because the President and his government have made a conscious decision that it is not sustainable and it is not prudent to borrow money from banks at 14% to pay salaries. We have agreed 
as a government that the only way to restore the economy of this country to where President Mwaike back left us is to further our budget through revenue collection. That is why last month we had a slight challenge. There was a slight delay on payment of salaries because the previous administration used to borrow money from banks owned by the same leaders to pay salaries. And we have said no. We are paying salaries by collecting revenue. So there was a slight delay, but all salaries have now been paid. Let nobody push us to go and borrow money from banks at exorbitant rates to fund counties or to fund our current budget. What we are doing as a government to go and borrow money from banks at exorbitant rates to fund counties or to fund our current budget. What we are doing as a government is doubling our efforts in revenue collection and we are doing that by closing all the loopholes, by digitizing revenue collection so that we close all the loopholes on tax exemption and non-collection of revenue. And I can tell you the economy has started showing good signs of recovery. As we speak today, when we came in, the cost of UNGA was 230 shillings. We have progressively, through good thinking and planning, without any subsidy, brought the cost down to 190, to 180, to 170, to 160. As we talk today, on the shelf, there are many supermarkets offering UNGA at 159 shillings, up to 155. And I can tell you it will continue going down, awaiting the harvest in September. And after the harvest, because of the intervention that we have done to assist our farmers with subsidized fertilizer, we intend and we believe we'll be able to bring down the cost of hunger to about 130, about 120. And that is what is sustainable. Because the president, in his wisdom, with proper advice from economists, decided that you cannot subsidize consumption. It's not sustainable, it is foolish, it cannot work. And we agreed, under the guidance of the president, that the way to go is to subsidize production. In any case, those subsidies were not working and it was theft. The Auditor General has issued a report that 34 billion shillings for the fuel subsidy cannot be traced. It was about theft. About the subsidy of UNGA, the one we were told that is 100 shillings, nobody found that UNGA anywhere. 8 billion shillings was spent at the National Treasury, and the millers are still asking for their money. All that money was stolen and diverted to the Azimio campaign. We are not going to go that way. Even if they go to the streets, even if they put sufriyas on the head, we are not going to reinstate uh, subsidy because it is foolish and it's not sustainable. The way to fix the cost of living is subsidizing production, putting money where it matters, in terms of fertilizer, in terms of seeds, in terms of other encouraging measures to allow our people to produce more at a less cost. That is a way in a sustainable manner that will bring down the cost of living and I want to say with pride that we are doing extremely well. We don't expect our detractors to see it because they wouldn't see it. But what will happen, even if they close their eyes, it's okay. When they open them, they will find that Unga is 159. They don't want to see that Unga is at 159. So they can shut down their eyes for some time. But since they cannot shut their eyes forever, they'll have to reopen them. When they open them, they will find that Unga has gone down and it will continue going down. So that is the situation. So, my fellow deputies, I wish you well. Please have a very productive engagement. The Chief Whip has said when you are in the holding room that the issues that you have, again, instead of coming to discuss your bosses here in public, the way I've advised you, form a small team so that you collect your issues county by county, meet the leadership of the Council of Governors, and raise them and then they can intervene. Kuliko mkuja muwanike hapa, because mkiwanike hapa, pia mutakuwa na shida. 
Nanyinyi ni deputies, you are not the bosses. That is the truth. Wakati wenu ukifika mtakuwa bosses. Saa hii mtosheke na ile mmepewa. <laughs> na iko na mna hiyo. That is the truth. Much as we want to assert our space, we are deputies. Serikali iko na mwenyewe. Sisi tutatafuta nafasi yetu hapo pole pole. Pole pole, pole pole kusaidia mkubwa kukaa na yeye mzuri na kumkinga asiingiliwe na maadui. Kwanza hiyo ni muzuri sana. Hiyo ni muhimu sana. Those who want lessons on how to defend bosses are available. I'm available. <laughs> so mimi natakia nyinyi mema and I trust the governors who allow you to work. It is good for them. I wish they know. They should ask President William Ruto what a good hard working deputy, what kind of contribution one can make to a government. It is really very helpful. Because you came in one ticket, you are one people, you mean well for the same people. So you should create a good working relationship so that you are able to make progress. With those very many remarks, in conclusion, I urge you to take a particular interest on value-based leadership in the public service as included in the program. It is now my pleasure, honor, and privilege to declare this forum officially open. God bless you and God bless Kenya. Asante ni sana.